up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 kia carnival courtesy of fred beans kia in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because there are some changes for the 2024 model year not only that you do get america's best warranty as well being five years 60 000 mile bumper to bumper 10 years 100 000 miles on the powertrain gotta love that and there's actually plenty of very unique characteristics about this one and of course carnival competing with the chrysler pacifica the honda odyssey and the toyota sienna so not a whole lot of competition out there when it comes to vans these days but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 carnival first one being the lx starting at thirty three thousand two hundred dollars then there is the lx seat package which actually is the one that we have today starting at thirty five thousand two hundred dollars ex for thirty eight thousand seven hundred sx for forty one thousand nine hundred and the sx prestige going for forty six thousand three hundred dollars but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the carnival is going to be the same powering the beast is a three 3.5 liter direct injected v6 putting out 290 horsepower at 6400 rpm 262 pound feet of torque coming in at 5000 rpm that power being sent to the front wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.5 seconds with mpg numbers then coming in at 19 in the city 26 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the carnival wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a little button located kind of just behind the shifter there if you press that you got normal eco sport and smart adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity as well so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the carnival here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 kia carnival here up to speed all right found our straightaway in three two one go eh, not bad that's perfectly fine honestly and surprisingly there wasn't any spinning either which was something i was a little bit worried about because all the power is being sent to the front wheels and it's a decent amount of power so that's actually not that bad of an acceleration for what this vehicle is honestly you're not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway so me personally I'd be perfectly fine with that in this thing. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes, that actually comes in and in pretty darn impressive 118 feet and that's typically like sports sedan range you guys i gotta be honest so typically with minivans you get like 130 feet uh if not the 120s at least upper 120s but 118 feet is dang good for what this vehicle is i'll say that and just to test it out let me hit the brakes here yeah that's fine i actually love the braking feel it's not a super firm braking feel but it's definitely not a uh it's not a soft braking feel either it's honestly it's just right <laughs> i'll put it that way and that 118 foot number that is an incredible stopping distance like i said for this thing but anyways then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's one of the first things i noticed in the carnival and i'm pretty sure i probably said this in my last review of the carnival when i got the sx prestige a couple years ago as well when this thing first came out this thing is pretty darn good ride quality it's definitely absorbing pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely so in terms of that i can see no issues going on a long road trip in this thing so definitely very much on point when it comes to ride quality as far as uh as far as seat comfort goes it's okay it's not the very best seat comfort i've ever tested the seats are a little bit firm but Honestly, you shouldn't have any issues there. And because we have the seat package, we do have power adjustable seats. And I'll get more into the seats a little bit later in the video, but there is power lumbar as well that is pretty darn adjustable. We'll say that is like pushing my back out right now. I'm playing around with it, but I do like the power lumbar. They did a wonderful job with that. So seat comfort is all right, no issues there. As far as uh, cabin noise goes, we're going 30 miles per hour right now. There isn't a whole lot of, uh, honestly, exterior wind noise or road noise coming into the cabin. And that's due in part because there is an acoustic laminated front windshield that actually does come standard for every single trim level of the Carnival. And then if you were to go with the SX trims, you're also going to get acoustic laminated front door glass. 
And that is the best. That's gonna give you the very most serene cabin, almost luxury like if you go with one of those SX trim levels. Then touching on visibility, I can see pretty darn good out the back and that's due in part because of that third row back there, the headrests completely fold down flush into that third row. So you don't have to battle any third row headrests in terms of rear visibility there. So definitely like that. And there is also a blind view monitor for the SX Prestige. I showed that in my review a couple years ago. Essentially when you put the turn signal on, since you have digital gauges in that trim level, it's gonna project what is in your blind spot up on the actual gauges itself, at least when you have your turn signal on. So that is pretty darn cool as well, helping with visibility yet again. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Kia Carnival. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2024 Kia Carnival finished in deep chroma blue. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Carnival is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter K, indicating that this one is built and assembled in Korea, South Korea, of course. So that is definitely nice. But so taking a look up front here, the grill will differ depending upon the trim level that you go with. The LX and EX are going to look the same, whereas the SX trims are going to kind of have a matte chrome grill, in case you were interested about that. But silver accents found in that front bumper for the LX and EX trim levels and then satin aluminum trim for the sx trims to the sides though led multi-reflector headlights do come standard on all trim levels but the prestige the sx prestige is actually going to give you led projector headlights they are going to illuminate a little bit further with the sx prestige as opposed to the lxc package that we have with us here today just saying but led daytime running lights do come standard i do like the design to them they're not just basic they're a little bit of an angular look to them automatic feature coming standard automatic high beams as well that one i love because essentially what that means is when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beams for you there so another cool thing is the uh, high beams are actually located kind of in the front grill i'm going to get up a little bit closer we don't have them on right now but they're kind of in that upper corner of the front grill on both sides so that's a pretty cool little placement there hyundai and kia both do that with their uh lighting they integrate it into the front grill i always like that look but anyways LED fog lights down below are going to come with the SX trim levels only, so I cannot show those to you guys, unfortunately. And front and rear skid plates actually also coming with those SX trim levels. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front. I think it looks plenty fine in the front. But let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the Carnival, roof rails do come standard on the SX trim levels only. Rear privacy glass is going to come standard across the board. I like that. Satin chrome geometric C pillar. Let me actually get up a little bit closer because right now it probably just looks like silver to you guys. But when you actually get closer up to it, you guys can kind of see there is some geometric shapes located within that C pillar. It looks dang good. A nice little design element that kind of differentiates itself from the, some of the other competition out there. So I am a big fan of that. Chrome accents on the door handles. You guys could probably see that. That definitely looks good as well. Take a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals as well. And if you were to go with one of those SX trim levels, they're actually also going to be power folding. So that's pretty cool too. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. 17 inch silver alloys for the LX trim levels. That's what you guys are looking at, of course. 19 inch machine finished alloys for the EX and then 19 inch gloss black alloys for the SX trims, but that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Carnival, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna, just below that, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, there actually is a rear window wiper. It's not affixed to the rear glass, like you often see in uh, SUVs and uh, a lot of other vehicles, but it's actually tucked away underneath of that rear spoiler there. I hope you guys can actually see it, but it is under there. Believe it or not, take my word for it. But when it comes to those taillights, they are LED LEDs if you go with the SX Prestige trim level only. So that's one thing I think Kia should have changed up. I think LED taillights should come standard on all trim levels across the board. A lot of other entry level vehicles like the Corolla, let's say, do give you LED taillights standard for all trim levels. So wouldn't mind it if uh, Kia did that with the Carnival as well. Also taking a look at the badging. Last time I reviewed the Carnival, it had some really cool, funky uh, lettering found on the real tailgate there, but this is much more subdued, much more formal kind of in nature. So a little 
bit different badging back there compared to the last time I reviewed this thing at least, but just underneath of it all, you will find a single exhaust outlet. It is tucked away kind of on the passenger side there. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. Something else since we are around to the back of the carnival when it comes to opening that rear tailgate it is a hands-free power tailgate for the ex and sx trim levels that ex trim that's new for 2024 i guess kind of kind of the big change for 2024 is letting the ex trim level have that hands-free power tailgate but for our lx it is a manual tailgate so i'm just going to open it up anyways once opened up cargo capacity comes in in a very oppressive 40.2 cubic feet behind that third row and just for reference typically like a kia telluride will give you 20 cubic feet behind that third row which is still dang good palisade will give you 18 but most three row suvs will give you like 15 16 cubic feet so 40 Point two for the carnival that is very very impressive but of course there is a 60 40 split so all seats do fold down and it was very easy to fold down that third row by the way but ultimately with the second row seats out 145.1 cubic feet total that is insane but anyways led cargo lighting is going to come on the sx trim levels only for that cargo area there is a 12 volt power outlet back there that comes standard i like that I also saw some grocery bag hooks there's some pretty massive storage areas i found in the back left corner there that was pretty cool as well you do actually get 115 volt power outlet then if you were to go with those sx trim levels so plenty of space back there i'll just put it that way but then make your way up to the third row legroom that comes in at 35.6 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in that third row so believe it or not it is actually doable that is a respectable amount there usb charging ports though do come standard for all trim levels for that third row so absolutely love that you can also find rear cup holders back there rear ventilation that's going to be located kind of on the ceiling of the carnival there and third row side window sunshades is going to come on the ex and sx trim levels so our lx unfortunately does not have it with us here today but then make your way up to the second row legroom that comes in at a very impressive 40.5 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there usb charging ports do come standard there is a 12 volt power outlet as well 115 volt power outlet yet again on the sx trim levels tri-zone climate control for the ex trim level and up rear window sun shades for the ex trim level and up eight passenger seating for the LX seat package, EX and SX trims. That's what I'm showing you guys, of course. But if you wanted captain's chairs, it's kind of an interesting setup. You'd rather have to go with the bottom trim or the top trim to get them. So LX or the SX Prestige is gonna give you those two seats in the middle. So interesting, but VIP lounge seats coming with the SX Prestige. I showed that in my previous review. That is pretty nuts. You do get a foot rest and some pillow headrest with those. It's kind of crazy, but also though a rear entertainment system on the back side of both front seats for the SX Prestige trim level. And that gives you access to Netflix, YouTube Kids, Twitch, regular YouTube, and a bunch of other apps as well. So that was pretty cool. But then make your way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating for the LX, Syntex upholstery for the LX seat package that we have today, the EX and the SX trims, leather seating though coming with the SX Prestige, you will find a power driver seat for the LX seat package and up, heated front seats for the LX seat package and up, ventilated front seats for the SX trim levels, and then memory settings for the SX trims as well. But like I said, kind of in the driving portion of this review, the, the seats were plenty fine. The power lumbar was ridiculously adjustable, which is definitely a good thing. So overall, you shouldn't have any issues with taking this thing on a long road trip. So then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the LX seat package and up. So I'm glad I'm able to show that to you guys. Heated steering wheel though, coming with the SX Prestige. So grips a little bit on the thinner side, but it'll definitely get the job done. But then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. A lot going on on this key. You got your key logo, of course. The, uh, the buttons to open the side doors are located on the uh, the front of the key as well, along with your remote start, which by the way comes standard on all trim levels, so that is pretty cool. But on the side of the key, you got your lock and unlock button, and of course the panic button as well. So it is all keyless entry though with the push button start, so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver engine start button located kind of just by the driver's right knee. And so 
Once started up, these gauges are going to differ substantially dependent upon the trim level. So with the LX trims and the EX, you're going to get the analog setup that you guys are currently looking at. There is a small digital display front and center, and you can control that using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel, giving you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's a digital speedometer. There's a trip A, trip B, drive modes, radio information, a bunch of stuff, pretty much everything you want up there. But for the SX trim levels, though, you're going to find a 12.3 inch fully digital gauge cluster that is going to differ depending upon the drive mode that you put it in. It differs substantially and it looks so dang cool. And that is the gauge cluster I personally would want because it really is amazing. The colors change when you change the drive modes. And of course it has all the information that you have on this mini digital gauge cluster that we have on ours here today too. But anyways, both of course will get the job done, but the digital gauges do look a little bit cooler, but then make our way to overall interior quality. If you wanted dual sunroofs, go with the SX prestige trim level. LED interior lighting for that same trim level as well. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls, again for the SX Prestige. Wireless phone charger for the EX trim level and up. Tri zone climate control, EX trim level and up as well. You do get some 3D embossed accents for the SX trim levels open poor wood graphics for the EX trim levels and kind of uh, what we have on our LX is kind of the uh, the silver geometric pattern that you find on the exterior of the carnival as well. So I honestly think it looks perfectly fine. Now I will say there is a decent amount of plastic when it comes to overall interior quality in this thing. Like what separates the gauges from the infotainment screen, which we'll get to that in a second here, but a lot of very matte black plastic there, a lot of matte black plastic surrounding the shifter and the cup holders and the center console here. And there's some more silver plastic found on the door. So a lot of plastics used, but that of course is done to keep the price down a little bit. So it's to be expected there, but there's still a lot of utility though that kind of makes up for it. So just in front of the shifter, you have a little bit of rubberized storage in our particular trim level three USB charging ports there. That's a lot. To the right of the shift, you have two cup holders and kind of a slot in the middle to put your cell phone. So always like that. Behind the shifter, a little bit more rubberized storage. You got your heated seat buttons as well and a ton of storage within that center armrest. Really a good bit, honestly. So overall, it'll get the job done there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to that infotainment screen. You are going to find an eight inch color touchscreen display for the LX trim levels. But then if you were to go with the EX and up, you're going to find a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display a much larger screen there bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard either way android auto apple carplay either way factory navigation system though is going to come with the ex trim level and up there's also a quiet mode i really like that feature that essentially shuts off the volume to the speakers in the rear seats but then limits them in the front so if you got sleeping kids in the back that kind of uh, helps you out there there's also a voice memo system that is pretty cool so you can record your voice and play it back at a later date there is an available passenger view system that doesn't come standard but it's kind of where you can watch the kids in the back from the infotainment screen that's kind of cool as well and of course you can check out your radio information up there and so when it comes to the sound systems you're going to find a six speaker sound system for the lx that we have today eight speakers for the ex and sx trims and then a 12 speaker bose sound system for the sx prestige so let me go ahead and turn the air down a little bit here let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, that wasn't that bad, honestly. One of the better six speaker sound systems that I've heard in quite a while. So I wouldn't have any issues with that. Honestly, you don't really need to be blaring music if you got kids in the back seat anyways. And uh, that was decent. That was decent for a six speaker sound system. I'll say that. But last thing I want to mention you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the carnival in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board. SX trims are going to give you that surround view monitor, giving you the bird's eye view, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS top safety pick if you go with the SX prestige trim level only, and that's because of the LED projector headlights, of course. But front side side curtain airbags do come standard, a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. But there is a decent amount of safety that does come standard, though, including a forward including forward collision assist with pedestrian detection, blind spot collision avoidance assist, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, lane following assist, driver attention warning system, rear cross traffic alert, and rear parking sensors actually as well. I'm kind of surprised to see that one because that one doesn't always come standard on other manufacturers, but if you were to then go with the EX or SX trims, it's going to add to that highway driving assist, which is kind of Kia's level two autonomous driving system there, and front parking sensors then 
as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here, this thing is priced actually pretty darn reasonable for what it gives you. I will say that you get a ton of space in this thing and you get America's Best Warranty as well for added peace of mind. So I do like that, but the space is really what sells this thing without a doubt. If you got kids and you need to go on a vacation or something, there is so much space in the Carnival. 140 whatever cubic feet I said is absolutely amazing. The, the available digital gauges are absolutely wonderful as well. I couldn't show those to you guys in this video, but they really are very, very nice. The available VIP seating in the Sekiro is nuts as well. That's something you see in like a Maybach, but you can get it in the Carnival if you wanted it. So that's pretty cool. Really the one major thing I wish this Carnival had is an available all-wheel drive, if not standard all-wheel drive. And so minivans or vans in general, they're kind of hit and miss with that. Like the Honda Odyssey, that's front wheel drive as well only, just like the Kia Carnival. But if you go with the Toyota Sienna, or I believe the Chrysler Pacifica as well, all-wheel drive is available. I know with the Sienna it is, not 100% on the Chrysler Pacifica, but so it's kind of one of those things, if you live in a warmer climate, front wheel drive is gonna be 100% perfectly fine. Or if you swap it out for winter tires, you should be perfectly fine as well. But if you live in Pennsylvania like I do, maybe all-wheel drive would be a better option. And that's why I wish the Carnival had all-wheel drive available. But anyways, that's just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of the new Carnival in the comment section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video, stay gold.